Who is Melchizedek? Why is he very important to Christians? The Bible is full of mysteries and layers of knowledge. However, not many of the characters are as enigmatic as Melchizedek. Melchizedek is a very fascinating character that appears only a few times in the Bible before completely disappearing. Although his story has been largely impactful, he remains a cryptic figure in both the story of Abraham in the book of Genesis and the story of David in the book of Psalms. But why is this mysterious figure so important to Christianity that for thousands of years, commentators have speculated about the nature of his identity? Melchizedek first appears as the king priest of Salem. In Hebrew, his name translates to king of righteousness or righteous kings. It is not clear if this reference is to his position as a king or as a reference to the righteousness of the Almighty God. The first introduction. Melchizedek is in the story of the war that Abraham leads against the four great kings, which takes place in the north of the land of Canaan. In the story, Abraham is portrayed as a military man with a powerful army, which is an unusual thing. In Genesis chapter 14, we read of the war of nine kings in which Sodom is defeated. After their defeat, the city was looted and the inhabitants were taken away to be slaves. One of those inhabitants was Abram's nephew Lot. When word came to Abram that his nephew had been taken from the city of Sodom, he gathered his army of 318 trained men and his allies, rode under the cover of night, pursued the invaders, caught up with them, defeated them and rescued Lot. Then Abram brought back all the possessions and also brought back his kinsman Lot with his possessions and the women and the people. It was after this incident that Abraham visited Melchizedek to pay homage. The Bible describes a one-time meeting between Abraham and Melchizedek after the War of the Kings, in which Melchizedek brought out bread and wine and blessed Abraham. The Bible does not tell us where he, Melchizedek, came from or to which group he belongs. We know that he was a king and a priest to the Most High God, and also that Abraham honored him by giving him priestly gifts. And praise be to God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your head. Then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. Genesis 14 verse 20. It can be understood from this that Melchizedek was a known and respected figure at the time, but beyond that we know nothing about him. He remains a mysterious figure, and many Bible scholars have tried to explain the mystery surrounding the identity of this great man of God. One possible theory advanced about the identity of Melchizedek is that he was the son of Noah, who was blessed by God. We will try to explain this later. It is clear that Melchizedek was viewed by the writers of the passage as a very special figure. He was born circumcised. This was before Abraham was instructed in Genesis 17, 10, 14 to circumcise his male children. And God spoke to Abraham saying, This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and the seed after you. Melchizedek was the first known king in a place where the temple was later built. In his time, he held the flag of the priesthood and even taught Torah to Abraham. He blessed Abraham, saying, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. Genesis 14, 17-20 According to the Bible, Abraham is the father of a proposed nation who will have to withstand trials and tribulations to receive the promised land. However, Melchizedek is the one who holds the scepter of the priesthood at that time. He was in higher order of the priesthood, that is why it was he who blessed Abraham and not the other way round. He helped Abraham in his destiny of becoming the father of the Israelite nation. Now let us go back to the notion that Melchizedek was one of the children of Noah. There was an incident in which the Bible recounts Noah at an elderly age being drunk and fell asleep naked. As the Bible reports in Genesis 9:22, and Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his brothers outside, but Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it on both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away and they did not see their father's nakedness. Notice that while Shem and Japheth refused to go inside, Ham had no reservations about entering the father's tent. Some have questioned Noah's judgment in getting drunk and falling asleep naked. But whatever his failings, he was inside his own tent in a private quarter. That is the way Shem and Japheth wanted it. Ham entered in, violating the principle of that privacy, yet not to assist his father, 
but to be amused at his expense. After Noah wakes up, he recognizes what has happened. One child exposes his father's nakedness, vulnerability to others, while the other two took steps to cover their father's shame. After this realization, something interesting happened. Noah did not curse Ham directly. Instead, he cursed his son, Canaan. He said, Cursed be Canaan a servant of servants, he shall be to his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth, and may he dwell in the tents of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. Genesis 9, 25-27 The question becomes, why did Noah curse Canaan? Was not Ham the one that committed the sin? Furthermore, what was the sin of Ham that caused Noah to curse the descendants of Ham? Why was the punishment so severe? Many reasons have been offered for this, including the fact that Canaan was the child resulting from the illicit affair between Ham and his own mother. But the real reason has to do with reverence. In the ancient world, merely seeing one's father naked was a highly offensive act. The father's position as moral and spiritual head would be held in disrepute, and the family unit would suffer as a result of this. Another interesting point of note is that many commentators believe that the curse of Ham was not pronounced immediately after the event, but at the end of Noah's life. In the curse of Noah upon Canaan, he was not punishing him personally for something his father Ham had done. The words of Noah refer not to Canaan himself, but to the nation that would come from him, that would come from his father, Ham. For our purpose, what is important is that while the descendants of Ham was cursed, Shem and Japheth were blessed by their father. There is strong belief among Bible scholars that Shem became king of Salem, owing to his father's blessing. Shem inherited the priesthood from his father. It seems that Shem carries the divine spirit and passes the torch to his ancestors. Therefore, when Melchizedek, king of Salem, is described as a priest of the supreme God, it can be understood that he is Shem, son of Noah. Mechizeldek, the priest of the Most High God, recognizes Abraham as the father of God's chosen nation and blessed him accordingly, the first step of transferring the priesthood to his lineage. Abraham, in turn, acknowledged Mechizeldek's priesthood and paid tithe to him, gave him a tenth of everything. Melchizedek is a fascinating figure whose precise identity will continue to be a source of debate. One thing is certain, Melchizedek's appearance in the Bible may be scant, but his impact is still looms across generations. His story leaves us with more curiosity than answers. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please leave your comments in the comments section about what you think of the story Melchizedek. Please subscribe to the channel if you are new and click on the notification icon. I will see you in another episode. God bless you.